Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog. Today, I'm working on my flock of you and me socks. The stitch pattern used to create the fluffy looking body of the sheep is created with a series of stitches that are twisted by knitting them through the back loop. In my opinion, through the back loop, abbreviated TBL, is a problematic phrase in knitting. I'll start with a confession and briefly discuss a basic knitting convention that should keep you untangled when you work through the back loop. Then I'll demonstrate how to knit through the back loop and pick up dropped or missed stitches with a twist. Let's get started. I've been knitting for a while now, but when I was a new knitter, the concept of working through the back loop seemed impossible. In my mind, each stitch is only one loop. It starts near the fabric, goes up and around your needle, and then back down towards the fabric. How do you work in the back loop when there is only one loop? To illustrate, let's slip one stitch or loop off the left needle. Now, imagine that we draw a vertical line dividing that stitch exactly in half. When the stitch or loop is placed back onto our left-hand needle, it turns almost sideways. The first half of the loop is here at the front of our work. The second half of the loop is at the back of our work. So rather than saying through the back loop, it's more accurate to think of it as through the back of the loop. Whenever you knit or purl through the front of the loop, this stitch is going to rotate counterclockwise as it slides off the left-hand needle. Whenever you knit or purl through the back of the loop, this stitch is going to rotate clockwise as it rotates off the left needle, causing it to twist. Just be aware, to get a twist when you work through the back of the loop, your stitches must have a conventional western stitch mount with the first half of the loop here at the front of your work and the second half of your loop at the back of your work. Now that we understand we're knitting through the back of the loop, the mechanics aren't very difficult. With our yarn at the back, because we're knitting, Rather than insert our right hand needle through the stitch so we're working through the front half of the loop, we insert our needle so we're working through the back half of the loop, wrap our yarn, and pull it through. The lower stitch is going to be dropped off the left hand needle, and when we do that, it twists, so the legs cross over each other. Sometimes when I'm working a lot of consecutive stitches through the back of the loop, on the next round, I discover that I may not have pulled a stitch all the way through the loop. So I end up with what is essentially a slipped stitch followed by a yarn over. The mistake is easy to correct. I like to use a double pointed needle. The stitch that I missed, I'm just going to insert the double pointed needle right through that stitch from the front to the back and slip it off the left hand needle. Before I can pull that miss loop through, this loop needs to be twisted a half a rotation clockwise. So I'll twist it, and then I can use the other end of my double pointed needle 
to lift that mist strand and then pull it through the stitch that has now been twisted. And finally, I can remount this stitch onto my left needle. And again, I need to make sure it has a conventional Western stitch mount. So the first half of the loop is at the front and the second half of the loop is at the back. I hope you enjoyed learning how to create a twisted stitch by working through the back of the loop. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your knitting friends. If you'd like to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for our You and Me socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting.